Okay, so let me tell you about my Rosh Hashanah, my first Rosh Hashanah in Israel. Um, well, basically, first of all, it's really hard, actually, to be away from my family. Um, I know I've, I've been back to visit um, a few times already for various things, but actually, it's really different um, to not be with your family at an important time um and anyway so um in the run-up to Rosh Hashanah everyone was sort of doing the similar sort of thing like trying to work out what to do and where to go for these like meals um and what shul to go to and just what we were going to do and um in the end and um, we ended up booking for um the second night of Rosh Hashanah to go to like a communal dinner um, so like five of us booked to go to that but then for first night Rosh Hashanah basically everyone was going to like family or friends but mostly family and I didn't actually have anywhere to go um, and then in the end a few people in all power speaking like um, Sarah and Courtney so we said oh let's all us do something together so I thought okay that's fine um, and then in the end like Courtney couldn't come so it was just me and Sarah and so she invited me over and we had spaghetti bolognese um, that her boyfriend made and his brother came and I did say let's do the apple and the honey which we did but then we pretty much just sat around drinking wine and watching YouTube videos and I had a really nice evening but it didn't feel that Rosh Hashanah -y. Um, but at least I was with friends I mean I was grateful to, to be with people um, but anyway the next morning I got up and I went to shul to meet Lucy and Lee and we did Lucy had found a shul nearby on Mogdaliani basically I don't know what any of the shuls are called we just call them by the street names and we went and it was this like really traditional Ashkenazi shul and um, we sat upstairs in the ladies gallery and we looked down and we just saw these like short balding white haired Ashkenazi Jewish men and it was just like looking down on our dads and grandpas and we said actually we felt very comfortable and it was very familiar um, although it was not the youngest community so we were like maybe this isn't the right kind of show for us because we want to meet people <laughs> um, but anyway um, so it was really nice to sit in show we didn't we'd all forgotten our muscles our books so stupid like we all had people coming and going I'd been home and just completely forgot to bring our books so we had nothing to follow along with um, and actually it didn't really matter you know we just we also oh so Lucy was like we must get here really early because they finish early in Israel so we were like really and she was like yeah I'm getting there at nine o'clock we were like oh my god that's so early but I thought well if it finishes at half past eleven I suppose I should get there by ten so we were in shul at ten o'clock and no it finished normal time half past one I was like I've never been in shul so long um but anyway it didn't matter we just sat quietly and like listened to everything um and oh and the ark basically was oh wow so again the ark um was like a safe um it had these big big metal doors um so that they when they closed it it would like you know be bomb proof um i was like oh my god they're like yeah again another reminder of oh yeah we're in israel but what was weird is actually there was no security um really outside the shawls um but i guess that's just because the whole country is Jewish so you kind of don't need to just protect the shawls you kind of have to protect everywhere but it was just interesting that the ark was like a safe room for the Torahs um, anyway so then after that um, the day before we'd sort of said oh what we're going to do for Rosh Hashanah lunch after shawl and we just hadn't really thought about it I was like oh yeah normally you'd go back to my mum and we have like a nice like kiddish at home lunch I was like oh my god and then so suddenly everyone was like well, should we go to you, Louise? Like, you live quite nearby and you've got the space. I was like, oh, okay, sure. So suddenly, actually, the day before, I had this mad panic of, like, I have to buy food and I have to, like, make a Shabbos lunch, uh, like a, a Rosh Hashanah Yom Tov lunch. So I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So anyway, we found this place called Oh Mama, which it's, like, um, kosher food that it's, like, um, homemade food, but you can buy it and you take away in Tupperwares and it's, like, ready-made homemade food. So I went and I got like loads of like already cooked cold chicken slices and like roasted potatoes and vegetable stuff. And then I like bought a salad, but I was just like, okay, fine. It was like a mad rushing around. Um, and actually I didn't even have chairs. I didn't even have enough chairs. So I had to go borrow chairs from Rebecca um, and Rookie. And oh, it was just like a big mad palaver. Anyway, so after show we had lunch, which was really nice. Then we just chilled out. Um, people like stayed, um, people went, and then in the evening we all met up again um, to go to this um, sort of communal dinner. It was like JC, 
I and it's like Jewish international connection New York or something anyway it's this woman who does all these like events for people with her family and she they basically hired an Airbnb and they were doing two nights of dinner for about 30 40 people in this Airbnb so they'd like made all the food themselves it was like really like nice like um homey kind of environment with like you know sociable as well um we met some people there it was interesting group of people i'm not sure i would go again to that group but it was very nice and very welcoming um and then the next day we went to shore but a more at a more normal time um and then on the way home we were coming back for second day lunch at me because i had so much food left over i did a real jewish mother catering um on the way back we bumped into this rabbi who was like oh have you heard the shofar and uh, emma actually hadn't been with us because she had to be working and we were like oh no we've just come from shul we've heard the shofar and emma was like i haven't and he was like would you like me to blow it for you it's a mitzvah and we were like okay so we stood there and then literally like he did 140 blasts on the shofar and we were just standing in the street for ages and he wasn't very good so it took so long and it was really awkward. And I think it was with his wife who like read the prayer and there were these other couple who they were with who were just standing there. And we were all like this group of eight people standing there while this guy really awkwardly tried to blow the chauffeur, but like not just a little bit, a lot. Anyway, it was really funny, but it was nice. It was a mitzvah, like what a nice thing to do. Um, anyway, so we had second day lunch again and then we went to the Hayakon Park went to the river and we did Tashlik and we threw away our sins which was really nice because not everyone had done that before and yeah we kind of like made our own little unit me and Lucy and Lee and Emma um, and I actually invited this other girl Nicole who I'd met um, like the previous week at Rebecca's for dinner and she said she didn't have anywhere to go so I invited her for lunch as well so I felt like I you know opened up my home and did a nice thing and made a new friend as well um, so all in all actually I had a really nice time it was beautiful weather um, the streets were really empty there were a few shops and restaurants open which I was quite surprised about but still and um, that happens on Shabbat anyway and yeah like we kind of like survived our first Rosh Hashanah although all in all I did feel strange not being with my family and I'm not sure I would want to do that again next year I think um, it's such a nice time to all be together um, but yeah it was great and they actually they phoned me um, and um, I managed to speak to everyone around the table I was like we don't use our phones on Rosh Hashanah usually they're like no but you're in a different country we have to speak to you it's a different rules I was like okay fine anyway so yeah so that was the Rosh Hashanah story and we will see what happens over Yom Kippur